show of hands, how many of you guys have linked GMRS repeaters? Oh, here we go. So what's the deal with all these GMRS repeaters linking over the internet? Hmm, why would you want to do that? Seems interesting to me. GMRS has a fairly limited set of repeater pairs or just frequencies that repeaters can be on. And if you went ahead and dropped two repeaters in two locations and then linked them over the internet, you could be creating some interference. And yeah, last time I checked, there's not really a whole lot of coordination that goes into dropping a GMRS repeater. So you kind of have to work with other repeater owners to fight interference. Well, the FCC had some words on that. This was a banquet that was held a couple of months ago in the Northeast. And there was a ton of really important people in the room in and around the area of FCC enforcement. And the topic of linked repeaters came up. And considering how popular that discussion has been on the YouTubes, I figure we take a look at it. Go check out how I Do It YouTube's channel. He recorded this great talk of the 2-1 Group FCC ARRL Luncheon. I will link the video in the video description. You owe it to yourself to go watch all two hours of this talk because it is really important and there are a number of very smart and powerful people in the area of radio in this room. And the questions that were asked were pretty interesting. So let's go take a look at the highlights talking about GMRS linking. Show of hands, how many of you guys have linked GMRS repeaters? Oh, here we go. That's the question should be asked. You can't link it in the internet. It's like using Zillow. 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 Zello. Zello. Because you can use a control to turn it on and off, but you can't link or what they say in the rules, you can't convey GMRS traffic. They, they say POTS. It doesn't matter anymore. The POTS, the, the whole POTS thing is there. It's there. You know, the internet's our phone now. Okay, so the technology, the, the wording hasn't kept up. But if the, uh, someone asked me the other day, a new, G, a new GMRS operator said, I'm going to do this. Okay, tell you what. Go to the rules. He read the rules. He comes back to me because the rules say this. Then you go to the FCC webpage, and it says right there in the webpage, you cannot link them or connect them by any type of, any type of network. Any type of network. It's always been that way because technology hasn't caught. We haven't talked about the technology when it comes down to it. So I got cases all over the country right now. Now you can control them, turn them on and off. Yeah, that's one of the things. Okay, so that that nightmare of the internet. Everything on the internet is real. I'm a French model. <laughs> okay, this guy is wild. And a lot of these forums out there that talk about this stuff. You always got that one guy. I know. Yeah. Do you know? <laughs> every There's every been bad information being put out. Every there. Discord. And believe you know, I, I'm just involved in the groups out there as you all are. So how do we resolve all this? It's going to become the complaints from you, from the uh, from the consumer out there, from the operators out, the professional people out there to say, hey, I got this issue, then I'll deal with it one at a time to go through there. So until I watched the two one club discussion, which mentioned this GMRS repeater linking, I didn't really know what was going on. And then I saw the Not a Rubicon video down here about the FCC, an interview with one of these GMRS networks that got taken down, by the way. What does the FCC do? I swear I made a video about that. Uh, I decided I'd go over and actually look up what's on the GMRS website over at the FCC. And if you go to operations here, click on that and about eh, right here, you cannot directly interconnect a GMRS station with a telephone network of any other network for the purpose of carrying GMRS communications. But these networks can be used for remote control of repeater stations. So a lot of people went, oh, telephone, so I'm good. Like literally, it, it was mentioned in the video, POTS, that's like a traditional landline connection. But no, they, they also mean the internet, at least that's the clarification they gave on this interview. Now before I give you my thoughts on all of this, let's, let's continue a little bit because there's actually kind of an interesting note here. If you take this website link and you bring up something called the Wayback Machine, you can actually pull up what websites look like once upon a time. And if you pull up this website, there is no traffic between 2017 and 2021. And in fact, that's when the verbiage that I just read to you was updated. What did it look like before? Well, let's go back here. Just pick a date on the 13th of May 2017. And let's go to that same section and read what the verbiage was before that. We don't have any other examples before that. Otherwise, we could go a little bit deeper, probably all for the better. Otherwise, I'd be up all night. So it looks like a very similar website, but click on operations and whoa, there is a lot of uh, different verbiage here. And if you look right here, this is what it used to look like you cannot directly interconnect a GMRS station with the telephone network. Okay, that's kind of weird. And 
the talk is the two one group makes a note of saying that the internet now is the phone. I don't know if you knew that, but most places that pretend they have a landline, they don't. It just goes to a place where they have a VoIP connection. Uh, you have a very short actual landline these days if you still have one. I'm sure there are still some. Don't at me in the comments, but you know what I mean. So then I said, all right, let's let's skip all this because this is just what's on their website, and although that carries some weight, why don't we pull up the FCC? Part 95, which is what governs GMRS. So let's go to personal radio services. CB finds itself in here as well. And if we go down to do, 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 general mobile radio service, we should find something on prohibited communication. So let's go back up here to table of contents. And we can go to prohibited GMRS uses. And if we search for link, messages which are both conveyed by a wire link control link and transmitted by a GMRS station. Okay, messages which are both conveyed by a wire link control link and transmitted by a GMRS station. That is a prohibited GMRS use, meaning the way I'm interpreting this is that if you are using something like a phone or radio connected to a wire link control link, which I'm assuming could mean they're trying to say anything, the internet, telephone systems, whatever, even if it was like a just a local area network, not the internet that you had control of and you had hundreds of feet of cable. I don't know why you do this, but th that's technically also a wire link. You can't convey any message to a GMRS station. Of course, you can use that wire link connection to control the repeater when turning it off and on, that kind of thing. If you've got some nasty user and you can't get to a radio, but you have some kind of push button on your phone or you can, you know, I don't know, I don't know. The point there is it's very confusing verbiage. Part 95, so it's 95.1733 pro prohibited GMRS uses is fairly badly written in this case and, and probably deserves an update because August 29th, 2017, unless otherwise noted. So they could do an errata of some kind to modify this to be a little bit more helpful. And I, I wanted to just get the details out of here before I gave you my editorial here. Now, this is just me talking. This is me completely speculating, editorializing, whatever you want to call it. I think at some point we, we have to say like, hey, GMRS is the appliance operator system. It is. So, so CB to a certain degree, at least as written. Speaking of appliance operators, that's exactly the term that sometimes amateur radio operators will say to other hams, implying that they're not a very good amateur radio operator. We thought it was so funny that we created a shirt called the Appliance Operator uh, Hoodie. We have shirts as well, and it looks like a union uh, crest, which I... I, I thought was pretty funny. My wife and I collaborated on that one and put that together. But anyway, yeah, I don't know. Share that you are, in fact, an appliance operator by checking out hamtactical.com today. Not how you power users are using it anyway. I don't, I'm not talking about that. I'm what the FCC thinks of when they think of GMRS. They're thinking of an appliance operator. You're going to go buy a radio. That radio is type accepted for operation in that space, and you use it in the exact intended purpose it was designed for. Nothing above and beyond that at all. Making a GMRS repeater get on the air using just commercially off-the-shelf available stuff is easy. It's really simple. You just power it, give it an antenna, set it up with some nominal controls, and, and you're pretty much up and running. It's it's pretty straightforward. In fact, Not a Rubicon also has a video on doing that as well. You can check that out. So at some point, the FCC has to draw a line. Where that line may exist, that's for them to decide. At least that's where they seem to have drawn it, at least in this particular case, of this gray technology area. At some point, Probably, again, speculation. The FCC is viewing this as breaking out of the world of commercial off-the-shelf appliances that the user, the GMRS user, is operating. And they're dipping into the realm of probably more amateur radio things and using the Internet to link up these radios. And so from their point of view, they're now bleeding into the realm of amateur radio. Now, for me personally, I... I don't care that much about this. I think it's interesting. I think it's not great, actually, that there are GMRS users who've been depending and enjoying this type of connection, and they're losing their access to it for what would appear to be 
a turf war that I don't think either side really cares about. I think this is purely with the FCC and wanting to not muddy their own waters and having two services start to blend together, which they've been fairly open with that, that they want GMRS to be the appliance and they want amateur radio to be the thing that pushes the growth of radio in terms of technology, technician work, actually cracking the box and doing work on these radios. They don't want that for GMRS. That's why our radios don't have to be type accepted to use them. We're the ones that's licensed and we're the one who has to make sure it follows the FCC rules. So in this case, I think it's actually poorly managed by the FCC in that part 95 is a little vague and then their website is uh, extremely vague. I think the way they wrote it and the way what the message they're trying to convey is too confusing. I don't know why they can't just say clearly you can use internet linking. You can use, I, I don't know, anything other than GMRS to link to your repeater to control it on and off controls. But using that to link to repeaters or use your phone like on Zello to send a message that gets picked up by the repeater and transmitted on your repeater. If they don't want that, they should just be clear. Website updates should be easy. And uh, yes, I know there's like a thousand hands that everything has to go to at the government level when you're talking about entities like the FCC. But I think we spent more time just circling around the mulberry bush and just having a clear answer on what their intentions are. So, yeah, I don't know. I, f I find the, uh, I, again, the 2-1 interview was fantastically interesting. It talked about CB, GMRS, FRS, amateur radio, pirate radio stations, among many other things, all in the scope of two hours. It was a fantastic talk. And again, thank you to uh, how I do it for recording it and posting it on your website. I will link again. It's there. Go check it out. Linked in the show notes because, uh, yeah, it was a pretty, pretty cool uh, video. And what are your thoughts? I'd like to hear them below. Drop them in the form of a comment. Give me a thumbs up if you found this video helpful. Make sure you subscribe. And if you haven't clicked that bell, you must, because it's the only way that you will see me again, pretty much, as the YouTube algorithm has continued to change. And your viewing habits, if they stray from amateur radio, might also not let you see videos that I post. And if you want that not to happen, click the bell. I don't even know how I'm explaining that. Anyway, 73 from me, Josh, KI6NAZ.